Hello! In this video I'm going to show you how I designed and built a carriage for my 3 kilowatt spindle motor. It's a very heavy motor but I managed to build a carriage for it so that's compatible with all the other stuff on my channel that, uh, that works with C-beam and the V-wheel system. Except I used these larger V-wheels rather than the mini V-wheels this time. What you can see me doing in these first parts of the video is gluing together 5mm thicknesses of acrylic that I've cut on my laser cutter um, so that a lot of this frame will be 10mm thick. Those screws are just to temporarily hold it together while I glue it. That was a test fit there onto the end of the spindle. I had to tape these pieces together because there were no screw holes or that is there were no bolt holes running through them uh, within my design but taping seemed to work pretty well. I just had to make sure I lined the edges of the two pieces up perfectly. As always I'm going to be using uh, cement, solvent cement and just getting it on a brush and running it down onto the gap between the pieces. It will just get drawn in by surface tension uh, and if you put plenty on it should glue the entire inner surfaces of those pieces of acrylic together. I did use plenty of glue this time because it's a very heavy motor. I wanted to make sure those pieces were all very firmly glued together. You see the V-wheels are actually already on that base plate there because I, I did a test fit on the C-beam before I filmed this video. This is the clamp for the top of the... Uh, to hold the top of the spindle on. Um, again, there's no bolt holes going through there so I had to tape it together initially um, so that the edges of the pieces were lined up perfectly while I ran the glue into the gap between them. Um, there's also these little pieces, one of which you see lying in the foreground um, there, which I need to fit into the gap on each side of this part. Um, and the hole that's formed by that is, uh, is what's going to hold the bolt which is going to clamp all of that on. I'm just taking the tape off now and you can see that part is very securely held together. And there you see I took a 8mm drill bit and I'm countersinking the bolt holes where they meet what will be the outer faces of each of these components. I had to take the V wheels off to do that but like magic they're back on and I'm fitting the side pieces now into the tabs on the base plates. And next I'm going to fit the nuts and bolts into the nut traps. I'm just going to fit the uh, end ones now and do a loose fit because when I put these end plates on I need to be able to move them all around a little bit because it's a very tight fit. When this is mounted vertically on the z-axis, that plate will be at the bottom. That is the plate with the hole in it. And the spindle will pass through that hole. That thing I'm cutting off now would have been the end stop flag. But I glued and countersunk the other parts wrong, so that flag won't fit through the gap that it was supposed to. I just filed it flat and now the, uh, that part fits on like it should fitting the motor in now you can imagine quite how heavy it is from the way that I'm having to handle it. Once I fit that piece on the motor is, is held in place but fairly loosely. It can move, still move around quite a lot within the carriage and now I'm just tightening up the nuts in the nut traps on the side. But once I fit this clamp um, using those little kind of external nut traps, that should hold the motor in place pretty well. The spindle motor was still a bit too mobile for all my liking, even after fitting that top clamp. So I'm going to change the design so that there's a clamp towards the bottom of the motor too. I'm fitting the C-beam in now. It was so heavy that I couldn't slide the motor 
onto the C-beam, I had to do it the other way around. But once I flip it over, um, I was quite impressed with how smooth the motion was, despite the fact that those V-wheels are carrying now quite a lot of weight. That motor must weigh several kilos. As I said at the start of the video, this is compatible with my system for a DIY linear slide based on the open builds designs. So once I add a nut trap to the spindle carriage and add these end plates, bearings, motor mount etc to the C-beam, uh, that will be a complete Z-axis. All these parts have been adapted by myself to be cut on a laser cutter, although they could probably be cut on a CNC router or uh, on an online laser cutting service etc. Um, all of the designs for the spindle carriage will be available on my website and uh, linked to at the end of this video. And the designs for the other parts that you see here are also available on my website. And this is an excerpt of a video where I show how to build the entire linear actuator from scratch. This video is part of a series of videos following the process of building a CNC router uh, based on the C-beam system. And I feel like now that I've got the spindle motor attached, things are really getting serious. Uh, I hope to be finished with the router quite soon, and uh, so the whole process will be up on my channel. Um, and hopefully help other people who are going through the same process. Uh, so I hope you found that video useful um, and interesting. If you did, please leave a comment, subscribe, like and uh, come back for more. Thanks for watching and goodbye.